Hello everybody, this is Arid. In-game name is September on the Nui, the Thunderwing, and the Public Test Server. Today I'm going to be playing on the Public Test Server, and what I would like to cover in this video is gliders. I remember when I first started playing and I got my first glider, which was like three years ago, and that was from a quest chain in the Tiger Spine Mountains. And I remember thinking, man, this is so cool. Well, since then, the gliders have become their own thing. They picked up uh, greater usability. They have functional PvE and PvE skills and a whole upgrade system all on their own. So what I'm going to do in this video is take you through all those processes. From the first, the starter gliders, to the craftable gliders, and then finally the Tier 2 and the Tier 3 gliders. And finally, what we're going to do is look at all the available gliders and which ones people like the best. All right, to get started, we're going to talk about the first gliders or what I'm going to call the starter glider. These are available from the initial quest lines in Nui and Harani zones, and they're upgradable through three additional tiers by purchasing designs from the Mirage Isle. The quest for the Harani is started in the Iron Claw Mines area of the Tiger Spine map. And the Nui quest is in the Bear Mountain area of the Liliet Hills map. Doing these quests, you'll get your first glider, and it's going to be called a Experimental Glider. From there, you can go over to Mirage Isle, spend a little bit of coin, and upgrade all the way to what is called an Ultimate Glider at a Carbon Tree Workbench. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop in game and show you where you can buy these designs in Mirage Isle. So you just go in and you run around this side here and ultimately you'll see these glider stands. I should also mention that if you happen to delete your experimental glider because, well, you didn't know what the hell it was or you thought it was a quest item or you just can't be bothered to even do the quest, you can also buy the experimental or the first glider design. And uh, with a little bit of lumber, leather, fabric, iron, you can craft up that experimental glider straight away. Now, finally, we're going to go back to this PowerPoint document so we can see the crafting recipe for the experimental glider, which again is showing you all those materials. Uh, here in the lower left hand corner and then the cost uh, for the improved glider the enhanced glider and the ultimate glider in coin okay so on this next slide what i have here is the cost well the same cost information but what i really want to do is talk about the abilities highlighted in the green boxes here at the bottom these gliders and for that matter all gliders each glider has four base stats which are flight speed gliding ability turning speed, and launch height. Each one of these stats can have a rating from low, moderate, high, to ultimately very high. And they can also have special skills. We'll talk more about those a little bit later. As you can see, these gliders pick up better stats as you progress them from the improved version to the ultimate glider version. Most of these stats are pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go ahead and go through each one and explain why it matters. So the flight speed is simply the velocity of the glider. Obviously, the higher rating, the faster the glider goes. The gliding ability is really more, it's really a hard way to say it, but it's much more of lift or how often that glider loses its altitude. Essentially, how well it actually glides. And that is actually important because the better that it'll stay afloat, the further that you can get. Now, turning speed, well, is quite simply how fast that you can turn. And we'll show this a little bit later in the video, but one thing about the turning speeds is it doesn't matter how good it is. Initially, it starts out really slow, and then based on the speed, it will really crank up. And then the last one is the launch height, and that is how high you, you get off the ground initially when you activate your glider. Now each one of those does matter and depending on what you like, you may find a particular stat actually more important than the others, but we'll discuss that here later in the video. So after you craft up your ultimate glider, which you do have to be level 20 to actually use it, you're now ready to choose if you're happy with what you've got or if you would like to upgrade your glider to what I'm just going to call named gliders. So all those are the starter gliders, and now we're going to move on to named gliders, although the starter gliders do have names as well. 
It is at this point you have some choices. You can further craft up your ultimate glider to a named glider, or you can purchase one from the marketplace, or find them in Archeum bundles, or find them dropped off of certain in-game bosses. Now I want to be clear in this video when I refer to the marketplace, I'm not just referring to real life cash purchases, but also things like loyalty, Gilda, and Golden Keys. When I say marketplace, I'm just referring to the marketplace tab. So first up, if you would like to craft your ultimate glider up to a named version, you actually have four options available to you. Those are Thunderbolt Glider, the Moon Shadow Glider, the Ezzy's Glider, and the Red Dragon Glider. Now, don't get the Red Dragon Glider confused with the one that actually drops off of the Red Dragon. So, all these gliders are Tier 1 gliders, and they all have the same stats or attributes. However, what is different is each one has a certain special skill. The Thunderbolt Glider has a Bomb Attack. The Moon Shadow has Stealth. The Ezzy's Glider has invincibility which is really popular and the red dragon has like a dive bomb attack now each one of the de these designs will cost you 150 gilda and you can buy them from basically the same area in mirage isle as you got the other gliders once you have purchased the design the crafting materials are basically identical so each glider uses what I call a special component, and in this slide what I am showing you is the Thunderbolt Glider's special ingredient, which is called a Thunderstorm Bomb Ray. Uh, that's in the lower left-hand corner of, the, of your screen here. Additionally, you'll need to craft up Ultralight Wing Ribs. Those are actually also available through that same quest series. On top of that, you're going to need a glider steering mechanism, a gliding thruster, and of course, you're going to be using your ultimate glider. So here in this slide, I show you the shopping list, what you need to make all those components. Those are all aren't super terribly expensive, save for the one ingredient, which is the Sunridge Ingot. The last thing that I want to note is that you're going to need a thousand carpentry skill to craft a glider. However, the gliders themselves, they are not bound until they are equipped, which means they are buyable, sellable, and tradable. So if you have a guildmate uh, that does have a carpentry skill, you know, maybe they'll help you out. Alternatively, carpentry is pretty easy to get to 1,000. I mean, all you really have to do is buy a bunch of logs and then process it to lumber and then sell the lumber. You'll get most, if not all, your money back. With all that said, you should now have yourself a Tier 1 glider, or at the very least, know what it takes to make one. The next thing that I really want to talk about is glider classification. Now, Arcage features two types of gliders. One is, well, just a glider, while the other is what they call a Magithopter. Now, a glider or a standard glider, which we have been only discussing thus far in this video, really there's three differences between the Magithopter and the glider. The first is when you use a normal glider, you will always, always continue to move forward. Whereas the Magithopter, it actually has an ability to stop in midair. Now, once you're stopped, some of the gliders will actually lose altitude. And so I'm going to pop in game and I'm going to show you the Astra wings. And you'll see as I summon it and I hold down the back button, uh, you'll see that I'm starting to slowly, slowly descend. In contrast, some of the Magithopters, like the Cumulus Cloud, uh, will pop that open here. And you'll see that as I hold b my back key, I'm actually hovering and I'm not losing any altitude. Additionally, standard gliders have the ability to use smoke screen, flaming pinion, or the air ray skills. Now, not every glider is going to have every one of those skills but those are available to the standard gliders. Now I kind of handed to this a little bit, but like I said, not every one of those gliders is going to have every one of those skills. And when you look at a glider before you buy it or the tool tip on a glider, it doesn't really tell you. So if one of those skills like the smoke screen or the air raid is important to you, just do a little bit of research before you buy it because you're not going to be able to tell from the tool tip. That said, the air raid and the smoke screen abilities, they're really not used that much in game. However, if they are important to you, please just do your research before you commit to buying it. Now, the Magithopters only get the Flaming Pinion skill. Um, no one that I have seen thus far in game has the smoke screen or the air raid skills. That seems to be unique 
to the normal standard glider. And the last difference between the standard glider and the Magithopters is how they look in game. The standard glider will have like a bar that you hold on to in most cases. The broomstick is an exception to that and they just you just kind of use it like a glider like you would picture a glider like a hang glider. Whereas the Magithopters they're a little bit more magical and they have like wings or like the cloud like we see. Finally no matter which glider you choose they all have the same amount of glide time which is three minutes where after three minutes you automatically get desummoned and you fall and they all have a five second resummon timer. And so before we move on there is another difference and it's not really a big difference is the standard glider and the Magithopter and they actually have attributes with a different name. So if you look here on this slide, the flight speed is called airspeed, gliding ability is called cruising speed, turning speed is called shearing ability, and launch height is called ascension. That said, what they do and what they mean is exactly the same. All right, next up I wanna talk about the tier two gliders. These are basically Dame gliders or Magithopters that have been enhanced. Enhanced gliders basically pick up two attribute or stat grades. The turning and the launch height will go from moderate to high. Nothing else really changes. To enhance your glider, you're gonna need a set of enhancement tools. Now enhancement tools, they have been available in some marketplace bundles in the past and I believe RNG boxes, typically those are just crafted. So depending on your server or region, it can be somewhat expensive to craft these items because it not only requires a Sunridge ingot, but 50 charcoal and two Thunderstruck logs. Now the good thing about enhancing your glider is that it will never fail and it is permanent. Once you have your enhancement tools, which are crafted at a carpentry workbench, you can enhance your glider at the same workbench. And so I'm gonna show that here in game. All you have to do is open up a workbench. Here I'm using a multi-purpose workbench, which is like every workbench put together, but a carpentry workbench will do the same. Uh, just make sure that you have your glider in your bag. It can't be equipped. And then you just scroll down to the glider. I'll type in here at top, glider option and scroll down till I find it and then all you have to do is click craft and boom you're done that's it that's all it takes to enhance your glider okay so next up is the tier three or the final enhancement and this is where XL really shows that they're XL uh, the tier three enhancement system requires a glider mana charge scroll now the mana charge scrolls they can be crafted for actually a small cost uh, they do cost a fair bit of labor and 10 gold to craft. That's not too bad. Now, the thing about the Tier 3 enhancement is that you only get to enhance one attribute or stat. It's increased from the high level to the very high level, and that is it. Now, you can during this process, you can also fail and decrease your glider stats, putting your glider into a state which is called wing clipped. This glider is still usable in this wing clipped state but again with reduced attributes. You also do not get to pick which attribute that you want to enhance or upgrade. Failing and resulting into a wing clip glider requires you to actually convert it back to a normal enhanced glider and then try again. To revert a wing clip glider, what you're gonna need is a scroll called a glider wing maker scroll. And this is where it's the big FU from XL. This scroll not only requires 500 labor and slightly more expensive material costs, but the big kicker that the thing about this scroll is it costs a straight up 100 gold to craft. This is XL basically forcing you into a situation where it makes more sense to visit the cash shop. And it may not be you personally visiting the cash shop, but somebody out there will be. Now, I need to point out both the wing maker and the mana charge scrolls have been available in the cash shop before, and they also have been cycled through RNG boxes quite a fair bit or frequently. This leads to these items actually being available for purchase on the auction house for gold, usually, usually at a much lower cost than what it would take to craft them. So if you're out there, please just check the cost of the materials and check to see if those items are available on your auction house before you craft it. I also feel like including the success chance to go and get a successful and not a wing clip glider was important. 
So when I first, when this system first came out, I felt like it was actually much, much harder to get a successful tier three enhancement. I remember engaging with this system on my original server, Hanor, and I failed like the first five times that I tried, uh, getting wing clip gliders each time and then having to go through and repair them and then try again. Now, however, on the test server, I actually did uh, 10 attempts and seven of those got my gliders up. So that's really like a 70% chance, at least that's what I saw on the test server when I was doing this video. Finally, on this slide, I show you the progression of a tier one glider all the way up to a tier three glider and what you can expect your attributes or your stats to look like. I also want to point out once again that even on a successful tier three enhancement, you may not get the stat that you like. This is due to the fact that the attribute that gets enhanced, again, it's all RNG. You may get speed, lift, turning, or launch, and one of those may be more important you, to you than the other. If you really are going after one specific stat and you get the wrong one, what you have to do is revert the glider back to tier two and try again. Now, thankfully, if you have a successful tier three enhancement, Reverting a glider does not cost you a scroll. You only have to dole out a base 500 labor. Uh, I'm showing you that here in game. Um, I should also point out that I do have a 20% discount on my labor uh, due to my uh, carpentry profession. So that's why it shows 300 label, but, but it's base 500 labor. But remember, once you revert your glider, you're going to need another mana charge scroll. And of course, you risk the possibility of failing and getting a wing clipped glider which will require you to use another wing maker scroll and of course if you get on a run of bad luck this process can not only eat up a lot of gold but a lot of your labor for that day okay so that is the complete process from the starter glider to the tier 3 glider some of you guys will find this pretty easy if, especially if you get lucky some of you will find it frustrating if you get in that uh, tier 3 enhancement loop in this presentation, I have included ratings of each glider based on the current feedback the community has given to me uh, in the description. But remember, what people like and why is very subjective. Some will like a, a glider simply because it looks cool. Others will like it for PvP effectiveness. Others may like a, a, a one glider over another for its PvE abilities. It's really up to you. So take uh, the popularity rating in the spreadsheet with a grain of salt. Be your own judge. But before we go, I'm going to add a few minutes of some glider usage, and I'll talk over that here. Uh, I've collected quite a bit of gliders here on the test server, so I want to show you how they look and how they perform at various levels in, of enhancement and show off some of the special skills. Before we go, I want to show off just a few gliders and some of the more popular ones so you can kind of get a feel for what's going on. So the first one I'm going to show off is the uh, Dragon Glider. It's not actually the Red Dragon Glider, but it's the legendary Dragon Wings that is dropped from the Red Dragon. Now the reason I wanted to show this one off is because it has a Turbulence Immunity. So here I am out in the Arcadian Sea. And one of the cool things about the glider is it will not uh, be affected by turbulence. So I can glide just like I could over land. Now, if you've ever tried to use a glider in the sea uh, around abyss, abyssal, I'm sorry, uh, you know what I'm talking about when I say turbulence. And just to show you another example, uh, let's put on the broomstick. And so the broomstick, here I am gliding. I got hit by turbulence right off the bat. Let's see how far I can get. I'm slowed and then I just got knocked back. You see the difference. So uh, you, you're immune with the, uh, the, the dragon wings. And also the other one that has the immunity is the Kraken glider, which that's this one here. You can glide around uh, without worrying about turbulence. Pretty cool. All right, next off, I'm going to go back to uh, Yenistir here and show off a couple of abilities. Okay, a couple PvP slash PvE, mostly PvP things. 
Uh, what I have here is Muzzy's favorite glider, and I think it's just because that's the only one he could afford. But anyway, this is the rocket wing, so this is a Magithopter. As you can see, I can stand here and hover. This one does not appear to lose altitude while you uh, float, which is cool. Um, so let's just take a look at his skills. You have to target an opponent, and then its dive bomb skill will just go right down on it, doing some damage there. Another one of the similar vein is the Umbrella. This is probably the most recent glider that's come out. Now this one does lose altitude, and it's got uh, the same kind of slam, but it actually uh, does a dot. Like so, I landed, and you can see the dots ticking off on this uh, training scarecrow. And it actually sucks them in. If you're in PvP, you've probably seen that used quite a bit. But it is a cool glider. And another one just like that. This is the Titan Wings. It is a ma uh, Magithopter as well, and it does lose altitude, and it has a slam move against... This is an AoE, so you just select an area, slam, boom. And I somehow missed a training Scarecrow. Uh, but the, if I remember correctly, the uh, Titan Wings is a melee attack one. Let's see... Rage Bolt. It's called Rage Bolt. Let me uh, go again here. Yes, it's a me melee attack, whereas some of the other attacks are based off of your magic attack. So, pretty cool on that. And another one that I want to show off is the Sloth, which I got here. It looks really cool. See how he's just attached to my back. I really like that. Some of the artwork in Arcage is really amazing, and I think we undersell it. Uh, but the cool thing about the sloth is not only does it look cool, but it has like a built-in drop back, which is really handy for mobility. And another one similar to that is the squirrel glider. He is just so cute in his little acorn. And if we watch, there he is. He pops up. You see his little eyeballs. There he is. And uh, yeah, he's just really cool looking. Um, it's one of those ones. This glider doesn't really have a whole lot of functionality. But it just looks so damn cool. Uh, and there's one last glider that I want to talk about, and that's the Raven Spine Wings. I don't have anybody on the PTS right now to attack me, but you've all probably seen this if you're on the Legacy server. The thing about the Raven Spine Wings is when you summon it, you get a five second immunity right off the bat. You don't have to click anything, it just does it right, right away. It is a Magithopter, so you can't hover with it. This one does not lose altitude, and it looks really, really badass. It's got that spinal ridge going down the back, black wings, blood stained, really cool looking one, and the five second immunity. Uh, what people really hate about that is, what I love about it is that if you get caught out, you're out there farming and somebody jumps you, you can raven spine wings up, you got five seconds of immunity, and you know go over to the Nui. And you know what? You're safe. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you guys hanging out, and I hope you learned something. That is the goal. Uh, I'm going to roll my outro credits, but before I go, we're going to tool around a little bit here on the broomstick. And I also want to remind everybody that I do a Twitch stream every Friday uh, at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you guys would like to win some Tryon Creator Codes for the Vero Weapon Skins, you can find me there. And I also tend to give away Apex. So check me out on uh, Twitch tomorrow. Well, that and is I'll pretty much it there. for this video. I hope you all have found this both helpful and informative. That is the goal. Special thanks to Al Hassan Mohammed on YouTube and Vibe Skies on Facebook for both this intro and outro music. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Discord. Links will be in the video description. If you'd like to support my work, you can do so by becoming a Patreon, a subscriber on Twitch, or direct donations are accepted through Streamlabs. I'd like to thank my current Patreon, Umokan Onal, for the continued support. You rock. Also, big shout out to my Twitch subs who make every Friday the bright spot of my week. And finally, I'd like to thank the wonderful supporters who have donated to me over the years. Riot Devil, Mac, Cassandra, Elder, and Wicked Bait. Until next time, this is September 
insane. Be well.